Hey guys, it's Joe Carroll here in Nashville, Tennessee on behalf of MixCoach.com. I have a little mix tip for you today that has served me well over the years and I hope it will you too. I have a little theory attached to it as well. So you know, there's, there's no doubt that DAWs uh, have become our tool of choice and as a result, our daily workflows have changed a lot in many ways to the better. Think of the visual aspect alone where some of you young guys will never know the struggles of setting up numerous noise gates or automating mutes on a console just to deal with simple noise floor issues like guitar amp hiss, you know, the space in between tom-tom hits. Things like that are just quick, easy fixes for us nowadays, and they weren't always. So we're in a better place overall than we used to be. That said, I think there's a real negative or downside to it as well. Uh, for me personally, this, this goes back about 10 years ago, coming out of a more analog approach, and then like an analog, uh, you know, Pro Tools hybrid into mixing just in the box, I found myself growing way too reliant uh, or addicted to what I was seeing on the screen. It's right there in front of us all the time. Whereas back in the day, maybe we would set a compressor, you know, it'd be in a rack behind us or beside us. It was out of sight, out of mind once we had it set. We went right back to focusing on what we were hearing, like we, like what we should be, right? And nowadays, all that stuff is on the screen for many of us, right in front of us, all the time. So it's real easy to get caught up in watching VU meters bounce, LED meters go up and down, uh, the pretty colors, right? Faders moving during automation, things like that. And I felt like my mixes were becoming static. Uh, right about that same time, I read an article in a magazine, uh, and it was interviewing, and I wish I could remember who it was, guys, but I can't, so... Um, can't give him proper credit, but it was an old school analog guy dealing with, uh, talking about dealing with, you know, getting accustomed to the digital world. And one of his recommendations uh, really you know, struck a chord with me. So I put it to work that very next day and really felt like it improved my workflow and more importantly, my mixes. And basically, it's setting up hot corners. Uh, for you Mac guys, this is built into your software. For you Windows guys, I think you have to download some third-party software, you know, an app type deal, but nonetheless very possible on your systems as well. Uh, so basically, Mac guys, let's you go to your system preferences, then you choose screen savers, and then you basically go to the hot corners tab and just set up, you know, a corner to on your screen to become um, you know, to trigger the the screen saver. So like you see behind me, when I drop my mouse to the lower right hand corner of my screen, that guy pops up, that neon octopus squid guy that's just really uh, lovely, isn't he? He's, uh, anyway, so now at, it's just an, in, you know, an instinct thing for me to do at numerous times of the day, I move my mouse down there and focus strictly on what I'm hearing. I'm not you know, having my deci decisions influenced by anything that I'm seeing because none of that matters to the end user. And as a re result, I felt like my mix has improved and got more vibrant. So anyway, some of you young guys that have never, you know, known a work environment other than this, I challenge you, even if you don't know you're having the problem, try this approach for a little while and see if you don't think your mixes improve as a result. Okay, guys. Hey, be sure to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, go to mixcoach.com. We have a lot of free content for you guys, uh, our YouTube channel. So um, take advantage of it, okay? Hey, spread the word. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.